cognitive and uh, in fact artificial intelligence is, is having an effect in industries of all types and just like others in our marketing as well. What it allows us to do is to bring our level of insights and analysis to a very new level, way beyond descriptive, predictive, prescriptive analytic methods, but now literally to learning methods. To, to allows us to see individuals, their individuals' behavior is way beyond the, the structured data sets, but into now the, the unstructured or sometimes called darker data, where we can start to color, color individuals, their behaviors, their patterns, and use that both from a prospecting perspective, an engagement perspective, an experiential perspective, and indeed the evolution in terms of advocacy. So right through the full realm of marketing from all aspects of, you know, if you think about it in funnel terms, top to bottom. And it's really about, you know, using data and beyond data then putting on top of that the capabilities of certain certain APIs if you like or applications and then bringing it to marketing. Those applications can be around personality insights, analytics, etc. So creativity, art and science of marketing, this is fundamental. What is happening is that from a marketing point of view and very much down now to the aspect of messaging and creation is that the aspect of science is increasing with the data availability. But this is all about, like many things in life, it's about the ma marriage of both. Both art, both science. And it's about, in many ways, the augmentation of the human being. And the stronger parts of the human being that, indeed, uh, systems that we know today can help with, but not in any way replace or automate, is indeed mostly around creative. So we can imagine how dynamic creative systems or di DCO systems can, indeed, be even more powerful in the future. However, the human creation, the interaction of that with experience data will be required through time. So the human's capabilities are augmented uh, by the systems that come with cognition and machine learning systems. So there's a few examples I can give around how this helps branding making media decisions. and. and one aspect is what I spoke a little bit about at the conference here today, which is around bid optimization. We can literally take the patterns of data, the, the insights, and bring that from an optimization point of view to see what are the best cost conversion equations across many aspects of media mix. And with that experience, you know, with the, a learning system indeed, what, what it is in cognition, that would improve even more over time. So that's, a, that's a, a simple way of thinking about efficiency and effectiveness of media, media purchases itself. Another example I will give to you is something that you see increasingly now in, in ad and ad capabilities, including from the, the IBM Weather Company, is, is putting cognition itself inside the advertising unit so that the advertising unit in its, in, in its interaction with the consumer it's, it's starting to behave in its own way, uh, cognitively or in an interactive way. There are just two examples, I would say, that are you know, material as it comes forward. But in, in the, the big case, what I would just encourage every marketer to be thinking of is two things. One, the guardianship, the ownership, and the management of your data. Your data is your data. The, the primary differentiation that you'll get is from your first party data. And then secondly, that if you want to be differentiated as a marketer, you need to bring cognitive capability into your play because everyone else will you know, standardize eventually on other commodity capabilities.